Shifting focus now to the recent high-profile hearing that turned out to be another escalation in the battle between Alvin Bragg and Donald Trump and his top allies. Republicans argue that the district attorney has allowed a crime to flourish in New York, but the data depicts something very different. Former United States President Donald Trump's uh, congressional allies took the fight to Manhattan as part of the Republican strategy to undermine the historic prosecution of Donald Trump. Judiciary Committee accused Bragg of embracing pro-crime, anti-victim policies that led to an increase in crime. Bragg's office defended Trump's uh, probe by showing data that depicted that the crime has significantly fallen in Manhattan. Now remember, Donald Trump pleaded not guilty to 34 felony counts of falsifying New York business records not too long ago. Today's hearing is about the administration of justice and keeping communities safe, something that has always been a central focus of the House Judiciary Committee. Our witnesses today have felt the effects of crime up close and personal. They've been victimized by a justice system that cares more about political correctness than punishing the criminals who've harmed them and harmed their family. We thank them for being here and sharing their story. Their stories are emblematic of a city that's lost its way when it comes to fighting a crime and upholding the law. As we all know, fairness under the law is a bedrock principle of American democracy. In this country, justice is supposed to be blind, regardless of race, religion, or creed. However, here in Manhattan, the scales of justice are weighed down by politics. In Bragg's Manhattan, you can resist arrest, deal drugs, obstruct arrest, and even carry a gun to get away with it. And guess what happened under this new policy? More crime. In 2022, Mr. Bragg's first year as district attorney, New York City saw a 23% surge in major crimes. Felony assaults rose 13%, robberies spiked 26%, burglaries in New York City went up 23%, grand larcenies were up 26%, and auto theft increased 32%, transit crime surged nearly 30%. Imagine that. You leave criminals on the street, you get more crime. We are here today in Lower Manhattan for one reason and one reason only. The chairman is doing the bidding of Donald Trump. The committee Republicans designed this hearing to intimidate and deter the duly elected district attorney of Manhattan from doing the work his constituents elected him to do. They have demanded access to the inner workings of an ongoing criminal case, information to which they know they are not entitled. They have subpoenaed a witness who used to work for the district attorney, whom they know cannot answer their questions and they have earned a lawsuit that risks future congressional oversight as a result. They have perpetuated the anti-Semitic and racist tropes that Mr. Trump has directed at both the prosecutor and the judge in this case. They are using their public offices and the resources of this committee to protect their political patron, Donald Trump. It is an outrageous abuse of power. It is, to use the chairman's favorite term, a weaponization of the House Judiciary Committee. I do not know if Mr. Trump will be found guilty. I do not suspend, know. Gentlemen, suspend. The gallery uh, should refrain from commenting and let the gentleman from New York finish his statement. Welcome to the safest big city in America. And the numbers are clear. The numbers are clear. And when I first heard about this hearing, I thought Jim Jones was coming here, Jim Jordan was coming here to sit down with the police commissioner to find out exactly what we have done to decrease shootings in double digits, decrease crime, homicides in double digits, made our subway system safe, removed thousands of guns off our streets that have basically come here from the southern part of the country. Uh, we need to be sharing good ideas, particularly off the heels of another mass shooting in our country at a sweet 16 birthday party is making us face the bitter reality of the overproliferation of guns, something uh, that the Republican Party is failing to properly acknowledge and move forward.